Sometimes I'm amazed at just how much enjoyment and pleasure can come out of a single measure of whiskey. It's quite amazing. And there are things that you can do to make that enjoyment and pleasure even more. And I'm not just talking about buying better whiskey. I'm talking about things that you can do to get more enjoyment out of the whiskey that you've already got on hand. Very simple. <laughs> I think it's important to distinguish between drinking for enjoyment of whisky and tasting for appreciation because they're clearly two completely different things. Drinking for enjoyment is when the whisky is in a social environment, when you're really just drinking and the focus of the situation is more about the environment, the people that you're with and what you're doing. Tasting for appreciation is different completely. That's when the whisky becomes the focus, when you're concentrating on trying to appreciate and get the most out of the flavours and the character of the whisky. And of course, they're not mutually exclusive. You can enjoy appreciating whisky and you can appreciate whisky in a social situation. And the only answer to how to drink whisky is clearly any way you like. Add any mixer you want, pour it over ice, as much water as you like, of course. Drink whiskey any way you like. But if you want to taste the whiskey and if you want to understand the whiskey, then you're moving towards appreciation. And this video is kind of going to be all over the place in between the two. Some of the things I'll bring up is how to get more out of appreciation of whiskey, whereas lots of it is just simply enjoying the whiskey. <laughs> It depended on your mood, depended on the environment, depended on the chemical condition of your mouth, what you've been eating, you're not always in the best place to enjoy tasting whiskey. And maybe the whiskey isn't coming to you like it normally does and it's everything's just a wee bit off. That's probably got far more to do with your palate than it has to do with the whiskey. So what I suggest before you even start a tasting, before you start a flight, certainly before you sit down to enjoy something special, is prepare your palate. And my tip for that would be to pour a shot of dark black strong coffee. Coffee seems to be very, very good at just flattening out your palate cleansing it, setting it up so that you're in really good shape to start enjoying the whiskey. And you'll find that even the first few sips of whiskey that you take from then on in taste much better. Really, this is a fantastic way, again, to prepare yourself for enjoying some nice whiskies or for enjoying a flight of whiskey. Pour something that you're familiar with. Pour something that's light and in the center of the flavor map that's not going to be too strong a flavor in any direction. And it just sets up your palate. It gets your brain and your senses in the right place to start to enjoy the whiskey. And if it's a whiskey that you're familiar with, it's a much better calibrator, if you like, to enjoy the whiskies that follow. There's another thing that's really good about pouring more whiskey as well is sometimes when you're sitting down tasting something really nice, the best way to enjoy it and the best way to get the most out of it is to contrast it with something else. Taste and smell backwards and forwards between the two. I find that tasting and contrast is one of the best ways to pick out flavours, tastes and smells that would otherwise be hidden from you if you were tasting in isolation. <laughs> Tasting blind is one of the best ways for you to fully focus on the flavours and the tastes inside a whisky. Sometimes when you know what you're drinking, you kind of prejudge and you've already decided what you're going to taste in the glass before you've even smelled or tasted it. And it can be a surprise when you take that whisky blind, you can taste things that you wouldn't have otherwise discovered and you can have a completely fresh attitude towards it. Another thing you can do if you're doing it for yourself and you don't have anybody to pour blind for you is that you can pour two, three, four whiskies, mark the glasses with coloured dots and then simply mix them up. Now especially if you've picked whiskies that are in a similar position on the flavour map, you can be shocked how much you have to focus and suddenly dial into the flavours inside those drams in order to match them with the bottles that they were poured from. <laughs> So two ways to cleanse your palate, the most common way is just to have lots of water on hand. Obviously you need to stay hydrated and avoid the headache the next morning, but what you can do with the water is use lots of it just to clean your palate in between drams. However, the most 
hammer blow effective way to clean your palate is oat cakes. These are traditional British or Scottish oat cakes that really, if you've never tried them before, the first time you try them, it's going to taste somewhere between cardboard and wood. They're really, really super dry. And what they do is they just soak up every last remnant of, of anything that's in your mouth and they just obliterate it completely. It doesn't sound that nice, but by the time you've finished one pack of these, you'll buy more because they do become quite tasty and they're utterly effective and they just pair fantastically well with whiskey. If you go to a whiskey tasting in Scotland, in the centre of the table, they'll have nothing more than water and oat cakes. Rather than being a subtractive thing like water or oat cakes that take away flavours from your mouth, there are some things that are additive that you can take with whiskey that makes the whiskey taste even better. Things like dark bitter chocolates and cheeses are super effective at changing the chemical makeup of your mouth and changing the way that you're tasting the whiskey and what you're tasting and also the texture of the whiskey and it certainly makes it really, really enjoyable. But this is less effective at appreciating whiskey for flavour and it's more effective at enjoying whiskey. So I would say that if you're really wanting to dissect and dial into a whiskey, adding cheeses and chocolate or any kind of foods is probably not ideal. But if you're just sitting there and you want to enjoy the whiskey and enjoy the flavours and the textures in company on your own, dark bitter chocolate and cheese is wonderful for that. I meet people regularly that just choose not to add water to whiskey. That hopefully is because they've tried it and they just don't get on with it. But I urge you to try adding water to whiskey and experiment with it. Really I do. Because a lot of the things that are locked inside that whiskey will not be revealed to you until you start to peel away layer by layer by adding drops of water. Especially when you're talking about cask strength whiskies. Those whiskies are designed to come to you in their most natural state so that you can choose where the ABV level is to your own palate. There are whiskies out there that don't drop their gown until they've nearly been drowned. There's a recent whiskey video that you can watch by Ralphie and he talks about exactly this. He takes a 43% Linkwood 12 and marks it basically as an average whisky until he's added enough water that it must be down to close to 30% and then it starts to reveal itself. Everybody's different, every whisky is different. Experiment with water, please. <laughs> The next thing is slightly controversial also. Experiment with glassware. We all know that a tulip shaped glass is the perfect shape for really appreciating whiskey. It's best placed to concentrate the aromas, to funnel those flavours up to our nose, to present the whiskey in its best form for appreciation. That's fantastic but it also concentrates the alcohol. So especially when the, the alcohol is of a higher ABV, your palate and your nose can be overwhelmed by that alcohol. Again, another reason to use water. But what I will say about that is that this is definitely the best shape of glass to appreciate whiskey and present the whiskey at its best. But just for fun, just from time to time, pick up a rocks glass, pour your same dram alongside and smell backwards and forwards. Sometimes, depending on the whiskey, it smells like a completely different dram. If you can't get anything out of it, fine, but just try it first and then come back. You'll find especially when we're talking about cast strength or higher ABVs, kind of 48, 50% and above, that that rocks glass, you can suddenly get your nose in the glass. It's not overpowered. You can taste different, softer edges almost on the whiskey than you do when it's in a Glencairn. Just try it. Try it first and then come back to me and criticize me for saying that, okay? Oh, and while you're at it, I'm gonna get really controversial now. Put some ice in your whiskey. Again, I'm saying this not for whiskey appreciation, I'm talking about for enjoyment of whiskey. <clears throat> some people are screaming right now saying it's sacrilege, it's sacrilege. Obviously nonsense, it's not. 
Obviously for appreciation of whisky, ice is a bad thing because if you add ice to a whisky, it dumbs down the aromas. It even dumbs down the flavours. You can't pick out anything like as much as you can if the whisky is served at room temperature. However, some whiskies, even single malt whiskies, even good quality single malt whiskies, are sublime when they are poured slowly over a chunk of ice, you just sip it and enjoy it. Do this with whiskies that you're already familiar with. You don't need to dissect every single dram from every single bottle. Give some of them up to experiment by pouring over ice and adding water and doing things like this and serving it in different glasses. It's really quite amazing how much more you can enjoy whiskey when you chill out about it. Blending at home can be great fun, whether you're doing it in a cask that you're maturing your own whisky in or whether you're doing an, an Infinity Solera living bottle type thing, but just taking whisky at home and playing with the whisky. Of course, if it's not valuable whisky, if it's not particularly special to you, you can play with whisky to see how it develops, to see how it changes. Sometimes when you're blending at home, you'll be shocked how you can take two really good whiskies and make a complete mess of it. Add more and you seem to make more and more and more of a mess. You realise how difficult a task it actually is. But leave it. Give it time. Because even without adding any more whiskies, just by it sitting there in the bottle on the shelf, the whisky changes. And more often than not, it settles and it gets better over time. And it's just a great fun thing to do. <laughs> Now this one is one that I don't particularly do very well myself, although when I do do it, I find it valuable and I enjoy it, and that is taking notes. When you're taking notes, you seem to focus more on the whiskey, you seem to interrogate it more, you seem to spend more time in the dram. And that's really good, and it also helps you retain that information and remember it more than it would be if you were just kind of sitting and sipping it. Sometimes, of course, you just want to enjoy the whiskey. You don't want to completely interrogate it. But if you're at a tasting, and if you're drinking nice whiskies that you might never taste again, then I would say it's much more important to try and take notes and remember what you're drinking. When you're taking your notes, it can be a good idea to sit with a flavour wheel, or maybe even a flavour map, to help you through the process. And that is to give you prompts of some of the things that you should perhaps be tasting in whiskey as you're sitting there interrogating it that some of these other reviewers and these more experienced guys are able to do. It can really help push you in the direction and help you lift flavors out of the whiskey. And once you've done that, you can plot it on a flavor map. You can decide less to do with surgical specific flavors and more to do with a general spirit of the whiskey. Is it smoky? Is it rich? Is it light? Is it delicate? You can plot it on the flavor map to work out where that whiskey goes and build up a picture and how that whiskey relates to other whiskies that you drink and enjoy. And finally, the most important thing about whiskey for me has always been sharing it. That's why I do this, that's why I get in front of a camera because it just drives me to share it so much. The pleasure in whiskey is at least doubled as soon as you share it. Sometimes you're not in a social situation that you can share your whiskey with somebody else. Sometimes you're simply sitting at home on your own. You can still share the whiskey. Try this, pour a dram, whichever dram that you have at home. Go online, go onto YouTube and type in whatever dram that is. For example, Bal Blair, Gordon and McPhail, 21 year old. Type it in the search bar, and here we go, up pops reviews that have already been done showing you exactly what they think of that whiskey. Here we've got Ralphie with that exact expression I'm talking about and Food Quig here. Both of these guys are awesome at picking out flavors and character in whiskey. And as you sip it, sip it along with them and see what it does. It's quite phenomenal and very effective at getting more enjoyment out of that whiskey. So there we go. These are my kind of top 10 rituals and habits that I've come to enjoy to get the most out of the whiskey that I own and enjoy. Thanks for watching. I hope there's been something here of value to you. And until next time, slancha.
Hey, Simple. 